Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL Season 14, possibly Round of 16, Group C. First game between Kiko and Dentar Den Targ. Six o'clock location. We have Den Targ starting as the Gray Pro Toss upper right hand corner. We have Kiko as the Orange Terran. Kiko is one of those guys that I feel like has underperformed in Hostage League, Trouble League, wherever he's been at. Also, I was trying to remember what exit won in the previous. So we'll see who advances out of this to go ahead and face exit who advances out of this to go ahead and take on tucson exit one trouble league of bsl season 12 and looked very strong there which is kind of creative play dentarg cpl coach hero i'm not sure if kiko's involved in cpl or not but kiko's very very active in the clan war I, the clan war league kiko is one of those guys that plays very very sharp at times i feel like his uh factory pushes in particular when he opts to get early and aggressive, his troop movement, his group's troop movement is very, very strong. And we'll see how that plays out against Dentarg and his uh, Protoss play. Dentarg opting for more of a defensive, I think he's going to go for a 12 Nexus, being that this is Turbine. So just putting that pylon alongside that Nexus. I would be shocked if he didn't. We'll see if Kiko opts for a 14 Nexus after this supply depot. I think that's kind of the i don't know if that's the standard thing to do on this map but i think it's the safe thing to do it looks like dentarg is gonna go ahead and opt to place his barracks instead so maybe he wants that front door seal before he goes ahead and takes his command center he wants to play it absolutely safe it's also possible that neither of these players are familiar with this map we definitely saw that being the case in the race four championships <laughs> it was a really entertaining match with artosis in it it was artosis versus boa go ahead and watch that I think you even have Artosis's point of view right there. So 12 Nexus. Behind all of this, looks like we're seeing an SEV going ahead and for Kiko, who's going to scout the upper left-hand corner first, is stocking up minerals. And he's not grabbing that, that Vespine gas to get his refinery. So I assume after this, he's just going to go ahead and build towards that command center. Just wanted to make sure that he had, I don't know, the safety of the rest of this. So let's see if this SCV goes ahead and wanders down. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't just go for the command center, I guess. But yeah, we're gonna go barracks first, kind of a variation on it. It's not enough to go ahead. So this isn't gonna be in place. That's the thing about this is I don't know whether this would be in time to deal with the Zealot. And I don't know if this, and it certainly doesn't stop the probe and the probes now, they are being annoying and harassing. Gateway Simulator up. Pylon inside base. That X is going to finish. SCV trying to be disruptive. You know what I've never seen? I've never seen a Manor Supply Depot. I've never even seen a Terran attempt that. And I'm wondering if it pays off. Because it feels like it just... If you can make it happen, the Supply Depot covers a lot of area. You could block off a lot of mining with that. Just a thought. Only works, I guess, in certain locations. But like on... Like the top down like this, it just feels like you could just lay a supply depot here and just cover a lot of, especially with a 12 Nexus on this map and probes moving to that location. Food for thought. Zealot marching its way across. We do now have supply depots in the way. Two Marines on guard. Factory being produced. Looks like three SCVs are going to stick on gas as that command center is coming online. Cybernetic core up, so not a lot to say about the early game here. Except that Kiko is keeping that scout, and it looks like that the Marines, who got the kill, this Marine managed to get the probe kill. So that is going to leave Dentarg somewhat in the dark as far as what the follow up is. It looks like it's just going to be standard two factory. The Zelts wandering up to get the shields. That was actually perfect. The shields getting peeled off. I'm just going to go ahead and back out of that. Dentarg ahead in the overall probe count. He went immediately for that 14 command center where Kiko is a little bit delayed. But nothing that's going to cost the match thus far. Range being upgraded. Dentarg wants, I assume, so showing range upgrading rather than skipping range. Oftentimes what Protoss will do is go for one gate Robo, go for immediately that support base so they can go ahead and try to slow your current opponent's economy down. Another SCV actually able to meander out. So while this SCV is under assault, there's already another SCV moving out to take its place. Second gateway being plopped down for Dentarg. Still not showing any tech. But Kiko absolutely wants to make sure he knows what the tech follow-up is. 
So if he can, he can go ahead and yeah, seize the second gateway. He isn't going to be able to get back out, though. But this is certainly going to provide him a lot of the... Because there's no Robo anywhere there, and Kiko saw it. So, and I think that's worth the two SCV sacrifice. And actually, Kiko looking at this, he's already got two factories. Might go for... A, he's going to go for a push here. Opening up his front, he's got a, six Marines. I think it's going to be that six Marine, three siege tank. Maybe bring some SCVs with him. Push. And against just two gates, three Dragoons, might be pretty powerful. Looks like, so there's second Siege Tank. We'll see if he, I think he's going to go in the third and then follow it up with Vulture and Mind Speed. Usually this is something I, I feel like that's stronger on a map where there's the natural expansion that's exposed. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out on a three-player isometric map. Thing is, is, even if this attack doesn't work, if you can just go ahead and box Dentarg into two bases, be in a good situation. But too late, Dentarg was already dropping some pylons to set up and grab his third there rather than the mineral only. We do have, looks like I missed it, robotic support bay. Shuttle speed being upgraded, no reaver. And this just might not be enough for Dentarg to defend this. Three siege tanks versus five dragoons plus marine support. Zealot dropping overhead. Kiko regrouping. The Vulture's gonna join the fray. SCV momentarily might find this. And Kiko now forcing Dentarg back into his base. Dragoons, I like the movement to go ahead and split these Dragoons out. But gotta be careful. Eat some damage right there. So Dentarg defends. But he is somewhat split away from being able to defend this base. And Dentarg potentially can just go ahead and, yeah, rally some troops that direction, wipe that out. Seeing that shuttle out there, some turrets being planted for Dentarg. This is a l or for Kiko. There's a lot of territory to cover. Armory, awesome place. So nice defense. Additional gateways being dropped. An observatory also being plopped down. Kiko currently up in the overall worker count, but unless something happens in the upper left to defend this, a probe trying to make its way through, this is going to be the critical thing. Is, is yeah, how is Dentarg going to find a way to defend this? And while Dentarg's worrying about that, Kiko's like, okay, while you're worried about that, my SCV's literally going to take down the Nexus unless you're going to defend it with probes. I'm just going to go ahead and grab my natural third. Shuttle trying to find some landing room with the speed, but there's a sufficient ring of turrets. Does verify this base here. Able to drop. Almost loses the shuttle. The shuttle does escape with just a sliver of health. A marine. Oh, this is... So you have a marine with three health. Actually a legitimate threat here. Dentark sweeping down, might want to go ahead and grab his fourth at the mineral only upon seeing that third being grabbed. He's going to go ahead, wander up, engage these vultures. Still no observers. He's able to kind of do that blind micro and take those mines out. So Nexus took some shield damage, not a lot else. Decent day's work for an SCV, but unfortunately not sufficient. Cannon coming online, so now three base versus three base. A lot of siege tanks out for Kiko. Plopping down two additional factories. Got that army working on plus one weapons. Also finally getting that academy up. And it looks like Dentarg is going to go ahead and just sweep things. I think he's just going to go ahead and grab this fourth. Play the game from here. Or he's just going to go for a tech switch. Tech switching to Stargate. Double Stargate Fleet Beacon. He can do that off these three bases. And it's going to be up to Kiko to respond. Right now, Dentark way up in supply as well. The other trick of this is, is this is a very strong map for carriers. Because of the spokes here in the middle. And also, obviously, where you can micro back and forth across that third. The 
Bite Epo's being taken out for Kiko to go ahead and open up his front. Now the question for Kiko is, is he commsats it, does he see it? He sees it. So sees the Stargate, sees the Fleet Beacon. So he knows he needs to get a move on. Make something happen. TP produces a round, not even bothering with a round of Goliath. Does have the Charm Booster upgrading, grabbing a 6 Factory now. I think he wants to play it defensively. Wait for the additional factory. Actually, no, I take it back. He wants to play aggressive. So he's going to run into this. Dentark is grabbing his fourth Nexus now. Putting some cannons down alongside. Has a decent amount of Dragoons. And Kiko, rather than opting to push into this, he looks like he's staging up to go ahead and grab his fourth. He's like, go ahead and have your carriers. I'm going to have Goliath in a minute. We'll play from there. Kiko is catching up in the supply count. This is usually a very vulnerable moment for Protoss. Nexus being whittled away. The probe not going to escape. Reaver going to kill that SCV that was setting up, so that's going to delay that base. Nexus still coming online. It looks like some troops. This is an over-dedication of troops, which is particularly scary considering you've got six factories and a potential push moment. So all of these troops are going to be out of position as Kiko is starting to push in. So that's certainly going to be a Nexus gone. But will there be sufficient carriers with everything else to go ahead and defend? Because keep in mind, Kiko just needs to kind of get to this perimeter and he can go ahead and siege over the wall to deny that third. Or fourth, I guess. He shanks pressing forward. There's still no carriers out on the field. Supply count lead for Dentarg, but a lot of that is caught up in these carriers that are not yet there. And they don't even have interceptors. Dentarg in the red can't even produce more troops. Trying to sweep up some zealots that are not leg speed upgraded on the low ground. And Kiko just making a nice little nest for himself. Already has several turrets being plopped down. Where are the Goliaths? Looks like he's going to go for a drop while all this is happening behind this. Still no Goliaths. Dentark sweeping in from the north. Now the Zelt Lake's be kicking in, getting on top of the siege tank. Shuttle dropping the Reaver behind. And it looks like Dentark has enough to go ahead and clear this out. But is he going to end up losing troops that it makes it up for Hiko? So the siege tank going ahead and disrupting the natural expansion. Kiko's push just got absolutely busted. Still sufficient troops. Dentarg behind in the supply count now, but he's got carriers that are still here. Took a lot of economic hits. Having to rely on the carriers to take care of this vulture. Kiko still hasn't grabbed his fourth, though. So right now we got three base versus three base. Supply lead to Kiko. Kiko regrouping, attacking again. He's got plus one weapons. He can easily go ahead and munch into this. Not sure why I wanted to use the munch, the word munch there. Beach tank being wiped out. The carrier, free, uh, the carrier fleet grows. I don't know that it's in sufficient numbers, and it's certainly not going to be in time to keep that nexus alive. But there's already a replacement nexus here at the nine o'clock location. So now, if Kiko just takes a few more steps forward, he can block any ground troops out. We can get enough Goliaths here. This was a very brave command center from Kiko. Going to go have to... Going to need to cancel that. Still leaving it. Okay, there's the cancel. So he's still... This is going to turn into an interesting match because I think Dentarg... So he's got the carriers out. He's behind the supply right now. But Kiko really hasn't boxed him in. He's got four bases technically up and running. Although his main's not saturated right this second. But he's got two saturated bases. Four bases overall. Kiko's got him boxed in, but the carriers are still out and running. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of Goliaths to contend with it. A drop now at the 9 o'clock location. Gonna clear the probes out.
And it looks like... I don't know, I think Kiko's got it. Yeah, Dentarg realizing it too. Dentarg's like, okay, if I can't mine at the 9 o'clock and you are getting the... Looks like there's also this base up here that got up and running for Kiko. Kiko with the map position, supply lead, disruption everywhere. Didn't have enough carriers to pull it out. So game one in a very chaotic match going to Kiko. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.